more. <laughs> oh, just let me casually get in. Oh my goodness. Oh. What do you think? Not much. I don't think much. <laughs> No think. Well, you don't think much of this, I suppose. Well, I think it has a lot of potential. I think it's got a lot of potential, too. Especially now that it's starting to come together, things are starting to work on it. We'll finish up the wiring harness and we'll work on the uh, the brakes and get things functional on here. And we'll be driving this thing soon enough. We'll see if we take it out to a parking lot or something. Maybe we'll take it for a little test ride. What do you think of that? I think that could be fun. That I like, like the, fun. the rope that they just glued to the dashboard. <laughs> yeah, that was like a surround that was going around everything. I guess to cover the ugly edge of the monkey fur. <laughs> And just, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. But then again, it looks better than all the holes that are in the dashboard without any kind of cover at all. I mean, you could do better than this, though. I probably would have just left the pad. <laughs> the pad alone would have looked better. <laughs> I don't know, man. The monkey fur wouldn't have been my first choice. It's also used in the back here. Yeah. That's so part of the headliner That's now. That's some 70s shag and wagon stuff. And here, actually, man. this headliner isn't too bad, but there is one little hole back there. Yeah. Something snagged it. But what you see is what you get. That's it. It needs a horn. It needs a horn. What does it need to sound like? Ah! They should <laughs> put a train <laughs> horn in it. <laughs> That's about what a beetle horn sounds like. <laughs> I don't know why they sound like that, but they do. <laughs> Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with this 1972 Super Beetle Volksrod. You might remember we had a walk around with Rob on this thing. Well, he got it over to me because this is going to be one of my little side projects to try to get this thing together. And he wants to drive it as soon as possible. He wants to have a little fun with it with a for sale sign on it and see if he could flip it. Uh, he got it for a pretty good deal, so I mean really anything he sells it for, I think he'd be making some pretty good money. But, here's the deal on it. Uh, well, it came to us knowing that it had problems. Previous owner couldn't get it started. I should say the previous, previous owner, two owners ago, couldn't get it started. Sold it to a local girl, a real cool chick. But uh, she didn't know what she was doing, didn't have a whole lot of time to put into it either, so it sat in her yard for, I don't know, maybe up to two years. Anyway, we ended up with it. I've gone over the whole thing here, and I started to um, find where the problems were, and it became very, very, very apparent to me when I first started looking ar around at things, and uh, <laughs> you guys are gonna love this. And before I even say what the problem is, when we talk about YouTubers and the people that leave the shitty comments on my videos, it's always like a Chevy guy or a Ford guy or somebody that always says, you know, Duckman, you're doing that Volkswagen wrong because my Chevy works this way. Well, this isn't a Chevy. Volkswagens are weird. Volkswagens are special. They have a lot of little idiosyncrasies and a lot of little strange things about them that no other car does. So unless you've had a Volkswagen before, you really don't know what you're getting into. And the damage that was done to this car was probably done by a Chevy or a Ford owner or somebody else that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. And this is perfectly case in point. Now what I'm about to show you is kind of a big deal. Uh, <laughs> And it probably costs us some very, very expensive damage. Uh, hopefully I have what I need to fix it, but um, well, we'll get into that in a second. So before we start showing you guys things, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links. And uh, we'll see you right after that intro. Thanks so much for watching. Now, somebody was in the electrical system in here. Uh, you can tell right off the bat, there's no key switch. It uses a power on switch here, the little light comes on. The starter button doesn't work. There's a big reason why <laughs> this thing had problems and why there was an MST ignition system that was just kind of thrown in here rather than being used. I suspect this car has a performance engine on it, but for that MST to have been pulled off, tells me it's probably cooked. I wonder why it would be cooked. Well, let's see what we got here. Now, for those of you that are Volkswagen owners, you might already know what I'm getting into. Right behind here is where they keep the battery. It's right, it's underneath the back seat. You see that red wire over here? That's the positive, right? Screws right to the chassis. Nope, that's the negative, and it's red. 
And it's the same on my 73 Beetle, it was the same on my 69 Beetle, it was the same on both of my Carmen Gears, it was the same on my bus that I had, and so many other Volkswagens. I don't know why that is. Some people tell me they were never like it originally, but sometimes, some point, somebody replaced the wires. But it doesn't make sense to me because the positive wire is always black. Well, check this out down here. Positive wire is black, we got a negative symbol. And look over here, on this side, and on the negative, we got a positive symbol. This battery is installed backwards. And you say, hey, Duckman, why the hell did you turn the switch on the dashboard? Well, that's because the damage is already done. Anything that's cooked is already cooked. And uh, <laughs> once again, this is something that uh, a Chevy or a Ford owner, or somebody who's just not paying attention to the details, cooked the damn car. And I suspect things like the voltage regulator over there is probably shot. I would bet that all the flasher relays, headlight dimmer relays are probably shot. Um, the ignition system here, that's the reason why that's not installed. Probably because reverse voltage, it's fried. If we're lucky, maybe it was just reverse voltage and it didn't work. But uh, at this point, yeah, it's, uh, I'm gonna suggest it's probably cooked. Back around here on the engine, oh well, actually, you know what? We've got us an alternator. But for some reason, the regulator box in there was still installed. I don't know why they would do that. So something is clearly not wired correctly either. Um, there's another ignition box for something over here, probably related to that MSD. Again, I'm gonna suggest that that's probably cooked. These wires are wrapped and bundled, which suggests to me that there may have even been an engine fire at one point, that that stuff may have been cooked, possibly due to electrical. In fact, looking at these wires here, the colors of them are all wrong. So yeah, I'm gonna suggest that there was some really, really big electrical problems back here. Light bulbs are probably okay. Those are pretty uh, reverse tolerant. Wiper motor is probably okay, if we had one, but there's currently not one there. Uh, I suggest the headlights are probably fine, turn signals are probably fine, and the switches in the whole car are probably also fine. Hopefully there's no more burned up wires. I don't know what we're really gonna get into until I start doing some surgery in here. You can see that regulator box down there. That doesn't belong in an alternator car. Well, I guess uh, <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna do is um, reverse that battery. And I brought the charger out to hook it up. I didn't even get that far. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by, you know, as I said, reversing that battery, looking to see if things are working and what works after that. We also have BS like this. I got loose wires dangling. I got a fuse box for something down here with this kind of shit. I don't know what the hell's going on there. That's just hideous. <laughs> Total bullshit. Whoever set that up. Um, there's a little relay in there. I don't know if that's for the rear window defogger or not. I'm not even hooked up anyway. I see the wire on the end there is off. So we'll figure that out. This distributor, I'll put it in the box of distributors. Then I gotta go through here. It looks like there's a lot of spare parts in this car. A lot of good and valuable things. But anyway, um, what I'm gonna do is just disconnect those battery posts, turn the battery around backwards, and then uh, reconnect them. <laughs> oh man, just wow. Again, probably was somebody that was a non-Volkswagen owner, somebody that's not particularly observant. Positive, directly to the chassis. Incredible. Now all the damage in here <laughs> is already done, so it really doesn't matter what I do at this point. But let's just go ahead and uh, turn the power on. We still get a light, but if I push the start button, nothing happens. Starter is probably okay also. Uh, they're pretty tolerant to be hooked in up backwards after all, it's just, it's just a motor. I don't know what's gonna happen to the fuel gauge. There's a possibility that could be cooked. Um, I don't know how tolerant they are to being reversed either. The bulbs in there are probably fine. You can reverse voltage on a bulb, and that's really not an issue. Uh, well, first thing I gotta do then is I gotta turn that battery around, turn this back off. As I said, it really didn't matter if I turned it on because whatever damage is done is already done. But it was kind of neat to see that the light did come on despite being connected in reverse. Well, you know, I just disconnected the battery posts from here and I haven't reversed the battery yet. But the first thing I noticed is a brown wire going directly to the positive. And brown, typically on a Volkswagen, is a ground wire. I don't know what the hell <laughs> this thing goes to. And um, when I connect this thing properly, I don't know what's about to happen. I guess we're about to find out. Um, I was just thinking also, it's a good thing this thing has no radio, because if it did, that would also be fried. 
Okay, now, closer off, take this battery, turn it around. This is actually the wrong battery, but it, it's at least connected properly and it fits in its place. It should work just fine. Right now, I, I got a bunch of wires caught because all this crap doesn't belong in here like this. What the hell is this now? Oh my God. I am going to have a lot of wires to go through on this thing. Oh man. All right. Positive is now connected to the positive like it should be. Negative on the negative. I should actually grab a tool and clean up these connections. They're uh, pretty well corroded. That might be enough to uh, get them right. Well, let's hit the start button and see what happens before we connect it to the charger. <laughs> All right, now, ooh, the light's actually brighter than it was. And yeah, still no starting. All right, we got these switches. I have no idea what they go to. I'm gonna have to look at those and figure that out. But still no, no fire, okay. Well, we've got some problems in here. We're gonna have to figure them out. All right, fun stuff, yay. I've got a song about an octopus, yay. All right, here we go. Go ahead and get this hooked up. That's right, the red one is the negative, negatory. Positive right here. So we got some nice Spocks. Spocks are nice. <laughs> All right. Let that thing charge just for a little bit. See if it makes any difference at all. A stick. Well, that brown wire that was there, I chased it up to the front. And it turned out, yes, it's a ground wire. But yes, it was on the positive. So what's funny is that they had the battery reversed, but they had the headlights hooked up correctly. I don't know. I really don't know. Anyway, since I reversed the battery, then I also had to reverse the headlights. And clearly they're working now on the switch. One thing about it though, they're not fuse protected. So we'll have to put that back in the circuit there somewhere and uh, hook it up properly. But it's nice to see that they work. It's one less thing we're gonna have to spend money on. I don't know what kind of bulbs they are, but one of these two switches turns them on or off. I don't know what's a what's a on there. Uh, you know what, that one switch was probably the high beams. That's why they were so bright. Now they're not as bright. That means this switch will probably turn the headlights off. Yep, they're off. Okay. Yeah, not bad for 30 seconds of sorting. <laughs> oh man. This wire, I don't know what this goes to. This is the Chevy guys. <laughs> Less engineering marvel over here. That needs to be figured out. I don't see a fuse block on this at all. Well, you know what? There's one there. Why didn't I see that from inside the car? All right, you ready for some fun stuff? Yeah, we got this wonderful fuzzy dash cover, and there's our fuse block. Let's just say our um, Chevy guy is probably the one that did all the wiring backwards, but our Ford guy is the one that painted the fuse block. Not supposed to be painted, you guys. You probably didn't even know it was there. Why? Because you're not a Volkswagen guy. <laughs> These things under here, usually when something's not working right, you just wiggle these in their seat as long as they're not burnt. And if they do burn up while your finger's on them, oops, that one fell out. We'll come back to that. If they do burn out while your finger is on them, they tend to explode. They get very hot and they leave you with a little burnt spot. So I'm hoping, so it looks like they didn't paint the back side of these things, that we've still got a good electrical connection on these. If not, I'm gonna be getting in here with a wild brush and a file trying to scrape off all of that paint. All right, well, steps in the right direction. All right, I don't know if the brake lights or any of that fun stuff is gonna work. None of this ignition switch stuff is hooked up because there's no ignition tumbler nor ignition switch in this car. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit of fun stuff. I don't know what this blue wire is here. That's somebody's addition. We'll have to figure that out too. 
but covering the fuse block with this was a bad idea. As I said, if those fuses pop, they're not inside of a plastic or glass chamber, which means they get hot and sparks and fuzzy fabrics like this. Oh yeah, they like fire. Very much like fire. And while it may not have burned up easily, it still, still, still could have. It was in the realm of possibility, not the way I would keep something. Absolutely not. My God. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're gonna have to close this video kind of early. Um, rain is coming. Everything just started to get sprayed on here. Uh, wind just picked up and you know, what's, what's Pensacola, Florida without getting a ton of rain? How many of my videos have been stopped because of rain? A lot, probably a good half of them. <laughs> Anyways, I'm coming to you from the future on this. I've actually gotten a lot more done than what you've seen in the video that's been edited thus far. And things are coming a long way, so I ask that you please stay tuned. As always, licky likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. we got a lot more going on in this thing. There's going to be a lot more going on in all my other things, so uh, hope you guys stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I told you so. Ha, 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 ha.